Today we're at the Tejeras Pueblo archaeological site, which is just east of Albuquerque, just off of I-40 and just literally off of old Route 66 here. I've known it's been here for a long time and I have yet to visit. So I believe there's some old Pueblo ruins here. So come along and check out the Tejeras Pueblo site with us today. This is on the very southern end of the Turquoise Trail, which is a scenic drive up the east side of the mountains up to Santa Fe. And we're gonna be exploring more on the Turquoise Trail in the upcoming weeks. The archeological site is right here at the Sandia Ranger Station for the Cibola National Forest. I'll show a little map right here so you can check out where it's at. Now we are here in January. I would imagine that in the spring, this area would be lush and green. Right now, the wash is dry. Come across the bridge. I do hear maybe some little bunnies over here. So it is pet friendly. We have uh, pet doggy bags here. We've got a welcome sign in. And then here it starts the archeological site and the story of Teharis. It was built by the Pueblo people more than 700 years ago. It's a third of a mile trail as it winds through a village that may have housed as many as 250 people. And look, there's a little more parking over here. So I guess I, I missed it. This may still be an active archeological site. This is also part of the National Register of Historic Places. So we're gonna start the trail to the left, following the signs to the Pueblo. And there are some interpretive signs about the different types of plants around this area. So on this timeline that they have here, they talk about um, around 1000 AD is when they were living in Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon. And then closer to maybe the 1300s to the 1400s is when they were living here in Tejeras Pueblo. There's a fair amount of interpretive signs about the vegetation around here. Most of it is dry and worn out since it's winter time. But there's another nice little bridge. There's probably water going through here on certain times of the year. This talks about what the people left behind. Archaeologists have been trying to reconstruct the life and culture with a lot of artifacts. The remains of the village, it says it has rooms with walls, ceilings, and floors. Cooking hearths, pottery, stone, and bone tools all give us clues as to what life was like back when they used to populate this area. So this here is a giant mound, and what this sign is saying is that, um, you know, the archaeological site, they're still digging the site. And so as you go through the layers in the dirt here, you can see different remains of the eroded adobe walls and some of the grinding stones and masonry walls that were underneath. You can see these lines of pine needles here. Apparently these are put up for some sort of erosion control along the path and the sites here. Several different types of adobe wall construction here at the Tejera site. And this is the simplest form called puddled adobe. Just a very th thick layer of adobe mud. This must be a reconstruction of what the main Pueblo site used to look like here on display. So this here is the main mound and there's an interpretive sign here that tells us that pit houses were underneath here and pit houses were, they're very similar to Akiva, but it apparently was a place of shelter a uh, temporary seasonal dwelling and it looks like they were only two feet underground and then they built a mound of dirt around it and that's 
one of the features that they have in the main mound behind me. And the path gets into these beautiful pignon trees. So this area, there was a kiva, and it is telling us it was a seven foot tall stone, but over the years, over the 700 years, this has been in existence. The wind has basically blown the dirt up against the kiva walls to where now it is buried. So I don't know if they're still working on digging it up, um, but it is not available for us to see, but here's a photo of what the kiva looked like. So I'm pretty sure these yellow markers in the ground are basically showing you, and it goes over here by this tree back in the back here, and then goes all the way around. These yellow markers kind of outline the edge of the kiva. Pinon pine is pretty popular here in New Mexico, and this sign explains that the ancient Puebloans actually used the pine sap for chewing gum, and they also used it to waterproof some of their baskets, as well as uh, many other features that are described here on this sign. Okay, so minor correction. They use the tree resin for chewing gum, and to be quite honest, I don't know if tree resin is the same as sap or not. If you know, let me know. Okay, this area it says find the mine with these little tubes, which I think you can look inside and see. Is it a mine from World War II or is it a geological mine? Here's the natural resources that were in this area. We're gonna head down and cross the next bridge and there's actually a little remnant of snow down here, just a little bit. Otherwise, it is pretty darn dry. Salt bush here and wolfberry. These signs will be much more meaningful in the spring when things are actually growing and turning green, but it gives you an idea of what grows here. Great, well, the museum is closed. It is a Saturday. I don't know the hours. Okay, well, to be quite honest, I've been a little bit disappointed here at my visit at the T. Harris Pueblo site. I never knew what to expect. I'd never been here before, driven by it a couple of times, but all of the ruins are still buried underground. So you can see where they were. You can see the outlines of where they were. I'm sure in the museum, it explains the daily life, tells you what it used to look like 700 years ago, but there's not a whole lot to see as of today. So that's what you can expect if you visit the Tejeros Pueblo Archaeological Site. Stay tuned for more on the Turquoise Trail. It goes all the way up to Santa Fe.